G'day everyone, uh, popping in for a live chat. I'm just checking that we're actually up and running. Uh, let me have a look, I think we are. Um, for our usual live Friday, uh, looking forward to having a chat with you today. Got a few things to discuss. There's not much in the rumour side of things, but um, I'll certainly have a uh, bit of a discussion about some things that are being announced and things like that that we can go over. Uh, I'm gonna give it a few minutes um, before we start. So I'm gonna open up the chat. So. Please say hi in the chat if you're actually popping in. Um, so we've got Fathom Rockers here, Casper's here, Sony Coffee Talk. <laughs> Jeffrey Beards is here saying hello. Um, yes, I have got my uh, Sony Coffee Talk about to start in a minute. <laughs> I'll just play the guitar. I can't actually play the guitar, believe it or not. Um, so who else have we got? Francisco Fuji. <laughs> Hi David, great to see you. D Harlow saying uh, Royston, Kane, hey. Stephen saying hey from Nova Scotia. Mark's also here. Not Friday, hi, well, it's Friday here, Mark. <laughs> Oreo saying hi, David. James is saying hi, boy, you're up early, Oreo. Recrat saying wow, I'm usually not this early. Kelly's also saying hi. Ghost Medicine saying hey, David. Jeffrey saying I saw your current wedding photos. They were very good. Thanks so much, Jeffrey. Dovinia says hello from Western Europe. Ferdinand says hello. Jeff Lou says hi, David. Fayez says hi as well. So we're getting stacks of people on board. Like I said, I'm going to give this a few minutes. Let me just put up pre-show so we know what's going on. Um, there will be a timeline put down below if you are watching this later on and you, you want to skip all of this stuff and just go to the stories. So I will have a timeline there that you can skip as well. Um, Nivex says good afternoon. Uh, Sid Vicious says hi, David. Um, now I don't understand, I cannot understand for the life of me why people think I'm a Sony fanboy. <laughs> Check this out. I'm going to show this again when we start the show, but I love it. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, Steve Leem's here as well, B&B Films. Hey bro, how are you today? Great. Um, DRLO, I think I've got a grape stuck in my tooth. I don't know. Oops, it's not showing. Steve saying greetings to all. Diala says you are very lucky to have such a great model to work with. I know, she was amazing the other day. We had a ball. Um, the funny thing was I actually completely tired her out. She was exhausted by the end of the day. I think we shot for around about six hours in that shoot. Um, Diala says I want that shirt. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, how are we going for time? I want to start roughly on time. I've got to prepare for a massive shoot that I've got this weekend. I'm uh, photographing a dance uh, studio for the whole weekend. It's one of the biggest jobs I do actually, so I'm doing that all weekend. Uh, no, not you, David, not a Sony fanboy. <laughs> Kelly says, why doesn't Sony have a 24120 instead of the 24105? Not sure. I mean, a lot of people love that 24105. An extra bit of reach would be good, uh, but I know a lot of people do love that. Remember, if you uh, want to get a fraction more ex uh, ex sort of extended, you can shoot it in Super 35 mode uh, if you have the A7 R3, and you'll, you know, you'll get way over that. Um, Jesus, says, hi, David. Currently refreshing the blue highlights in my hair, 8 p.m. here in Canada. Well, that's fantastic, Gene. I could probably do that too. <laughs> uh, just for a different look. Those dance shots are tiring, but so much fun. I used to do them uh, in another lifetime. Yeah, I know I've got two full days, so starting at nine o'clock and probably finishing at five or six. Uh, so it's gonna be a massive one um, that I'm doing for one of the biggest studios here. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be great. Philip said, hey, hanging out with the Tiki Bar. Sadly, didn't get the notification. I wonder why, Philip, that's really interesting. Sid says, David, I had a client request for, uh, film in 218 and I shot it last week. That's fantastic, Sid. Julian says, what's up, David Oster? Thanks for liking my pics the other day. No worries, Julian, at all. Don't forget to, guys, to follow me on this, D-O-A-S-T-L-E-R. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because I will always follow you back. Um, sometimes, though, if I don't... If I do miss it, just send me a message because the problem is sometimes on my phone it only shows so many notifications and, and because I've got 15,000 subscribers, I'll get a lot of notif notifications and sometimes they disappear off the bottom um, and then I don't see them anymore. So just make sure if I have missed you, um, just send me a message and I will like, like it straight away if you do that. Um, Barry's saying hello as well. 
Uh, like I said, I'm going to give it another minute, guys, and then we'll start the show for the day. Um, how many have we got watching now? 90. If you can, guys, please give me a thumbs up. It lets other people know that I'm on live. A lot of people don't get notifications. Um, so, uh, like, who was it just said it before? Um, I can't remember. Someone just said it before that they, uh, Philip said he didn't get the notification. So, if you could, please give me a thumbs up. It lets people know. I don't know why YouTube's not giving the notifications out. Shane is saying, hey, from Milwaukee. Um, great time watching you. Uh, we'll be doing a time lapse. Love all your work. Thanks so much, Shane. Tom said, hi, David. Um, I am going to put out a video. <laughs> I'm dying to do it. I'll talk about it in a minute, what I'm going to do shortly uh, uh, for a video because I'm cracking up with some of the comments I've been getting. So I'm going to talk about that shortly. Uh, guys, I'm going to switch over because I'm going to start the show. I'm going to pour my coffee and then we'll get started. So hang on for a sec. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, what are we? We're 1 p.m. here in Melbourne. We're just after 1 p.m. It's very hot today. It's um, nearly 30, well, it is, it's 30 degrees Celsius, so we're in for a real heat wave at the moment. Uh, well, it's heat, heating up because we've just come out of winter, and we're only in spring, so it's going to be a hot summer, I think. Um, it's very windy, though, so I don't know whether you're going to pick that up or not. Occasionally, you might hear a few wind gusts, so it's pretty windy. I wanted to thank Delta Dave. I cannot understand why people call me a Sony fanboy, because seriously, there is nothing about me that is Sony fanboy at all. Now, come on. Why, why do people say that I'm a Sony fanboy? Um, I wanted to thank Delta Dave. Delta Dave sent me a, another one. He sent me some black ones recently, and I love these yellow ones that he's actually sent me. Um, so he sent me a couple of these and he's also sent me one for Kiara. So I've got to get Kiara to wear one and, and uh, do it in a shoot so he sees that I've actually given it to her because he actually sent her one as well. Um, it'll be interesting to see what she does if I say she's got to wear it. <laughs> I can't wait to see. Now let me um, pour my coffee uh, because we've got to start with that before we do anything. Um, my latte comes out of a bottle. Amazing what they can do with lattes nowadays, isn't it? So let me just pour this latte. And, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Let me, oh, I've got to be careful where I put that. <laughs> so you don't see it, uh, the latte. So here, uh, cheers everyone, uh, latte time. Especially now it's hot outside. I shouldn't be drinking this hot latte. Mmm. Um, just talking to everyone in the pre-show, I've got a massive shoot this weekend, uh, so I don't think I'll be posting anything live or posting at all because I've got a very big dance school that I work for. I'm doing all of their shoots over the weekend and their full day is starting basically from um, nine in the morning till six at night. So it's a massive uh, workload. I think I, it takes every single bit of gear that I own to do it. I'll, I'll be taking something like six pro photo lights uh, I'm setting up a uh, massive backdrop. Uh, it takes every light stand that I actually own. <laughs> and I'm also setting up a Christmas shoot in the same dance studio as well. So that's another separate shoot that I've got to actually do as well. I may post some pics for you guys to show how I'm setting it up. I just want to go through the comments uh, just in here just to see um, if there's any other things um, coming up. Diallo says, yeah, dance shoots are very tiring, um, but they're great fun. I love doing them. I really do have a great time doing it. Um, what else? We've got Barry saying hi. Shane's also saying hi. Um, Royston saying, love the Halloween shoots of the grandkids. I know they're so cute, my grandkids. Check out. I'll show you my grandkids just so you can see. Um, oops. Let me just see if I can open up Facebook and I'll show you how cute they look. Uh, because they do, they look gorgeous. My wife dressed them up, and um, they look amazing. They, they look so cute. Uh, let me show you. And see if I can show you Kerry's photos, because Kerry's photos are so cool. So let me open up here. Where did she post them? So let me show you because they're, they're so cute. I love them. These are the photos that Kerry did. So this is, I'll open it up and you'll see. So that's my granddaughter, that's Patia. And Kerry's done the makeup and everything and set them up. Um, 
This was the both of them. That's Lenny and this is Patia down below here. But they're so cute. Oh, they, oh, I just adore them and they had an absolute ball and Kerry had great fun uh, doing their makeup and stuff like that, which <laughs> uh, we had a ball. Um, so anyway, there you go. So that's what they were. Uh, what else have we got? Next shirt will be a pink shirt. I love it. Someone's saying next shirt will be a pink shirt. Who's that Mick saying that? Um, you got to tattoo the alpha on your cheek. <laughs> yellow looked orange. This is, this is orange. Um, did I say yellow? Uh, where are we? I'm just seeing some other. Hello, David Corona Coffee from Los Angeles. Yes, it's Corona Coffee. How many hours to do the job? Which one? Are you talking about the this one? I'm going to show you this in a second. Um, Kiara's one, well, I'll explain basically what I wanted to do here. I wanted to review the Tamron uh, 28 to 75. So what I was doing, I actually um, used the Tamron 28 to 75. It was on the A73 though. And basically I put on the ND filter. Now this, the ND that I'm using here was the Hoyer, I think. Um, yeah, it's a Hoyer. Let me see if I, if I can get you focus on it. So that was a Hoyer 67 variable ND filter. So that was the variable ND, ND filter that I used. I wanted to try and see how this worked on the Moser Aircross. So I wanted to see how well that this will work all together uh, doing a long shoot. So I used the Moser Aircross. So you can see it's quite a, a light gimbal. I mean, it really is a lovely light gimbal. Um, and I wanted to see how well it would work over a long period of time. Now the shoot that we actually did was uh, six hours. I shot with the camera on 1080p, uh, 60, uh, 1080 60p, and I used um, 2.8 aperture the whole time. So I didn't vary the aperture because I wanted to try shooting it wide open. Uh, and it, it, I was really happy with the results. If you haven't seen the video, you can, uh, go down to a, a couple before and you'll actually see the video that, that, that's working. But the, the actual whole thing went really well. I was really happy with how it actually performed um, and can't complain one bit. I don't want to, it's not going to play because it, I think it's just using up too much memory. Um, but have a look at the video yourself and you can sort of check and, you know, see how it is. Yeah, I'm going to quit that because it might end up crashing everything. Um, so... Yeah, I did that with Kiara and we ended up going for, I think it was six hours. The reason why I wanted to do it was um, I wanted to show um, this location off, which was this beautiful farm that is in near Dale, well, it is in Dalesford, near me, not far from where I live. So I wanted to show that off. Uh, and normally you have to pay $150 for an hour to actually shoot on that farm. Um, so it is quite expensive to actually shoot in those locations. Now, I just basically asked them if, if because I, I wanted to show off the, the, the lens and the camera and the gimbal, um, if I could basically use their property uh, and do a shoot for free, basically. And they said, yes, no problem at all, as long as I would share the results with them. And they've already shared that video on their website. So it's a win-win for me, really. And I got to use that beautiful location. Now, I'm going to go back in um, December because the lavender, when it uh, flowers in this farm is incredible. It's gorgeous lavender. It's blue fields everywhere. If you look at the beginning, you'll get an idea because I show a little bit of the lavender fields, but they're not flowering yet. They flower in December, January. So I'm actually going to show, uh, do another video there. I might do a mock wedding with Kiara uh, because I really would love to show that changing the seasons like doing say in um, summer. And then I may do an autumn shoot as well and show the autumn foliage. But we just had an absolute ball. It's the first time ever though that I can tell you that I absolutely exhausted Kiara. She was absolutely devastated by the end of the day and it took around six hours. Um, so that, that's basically that shoot. So please have a look at it uh, down below if you want to have a look at that. And I'm going to quickly go through some of these before we start um, going through some news. So that's how many hours I did for that job. If that's what you were talking about, Sid, it was around about six hours. Uh, my camera saw sold the 2.8 400mm may be the first in Aussie. Oh, they sold it, did they? Yeah, well, when I looked at the one that Mark Geller had, that was the only one Barry in Australia at the time. So, yeah, perhaps they've got another one in. Alan said, hey, David, what's your go-to lens for group photos? 
Uh, I often use the 16 to 34 only because it, when I'm dealing with weddings, for instance, um, often the groups get really big and I can use 34 quite well. So I usually use the 16 to 34. Um, Robert said this just kicked off. Um, yes, it, it has. Uh, on A9, what's the fastest shutter speed you have used with the least amount of noise on high speed sports? Well, I use 32 thousandths often, all the time, but I don't shoot sports so much, so I can't tell you about high speed sports because I'm only shooting portraiture and weddings and things like that, uh, but I often use uh, 132 thousandth, and I haven't found the noise a problem at all on that camera. Um, I'll easily go up to 6400 ISO, as long as you expose correctly. That's the secret for any ISO shots, is you must expose a little bit to the right even, not under. Hi Carl, how are you? Uh, Matt's saying deep into the third coffee. Is that real coffee, Matt? Matt fan said, um, that depends on how much light there is. Yep, exactly. Um, where were we? D Harlow said, great costumes and beautiful kids. They are beautiful, I love them to death. Uh, Carl said Grim Reaper, yeah I know. Um, CWC says, hey David, love the vids man, you inspire me every day, thank you so much. What about the Z battery? I'm gonna talk about that shortly. Uh, any news about the A7S III? No, I'm, I'm still thinking that's gonna be first quarter next year, Andre, Andre. So I don't think we're gonna see that before then. Mark said, just put up a video on my channel about the uh, new Benro ND filter system. Thanks Mark. Um, Matt said, would you please uh, introduce the gent over to your right shoulder? That's not a gent, gent, that's Kiara. You're talking about Kiara over here? That's Kiara? That's not a gent, guys. That's, uh, she's just got very short hair. <laughs> it's Susie, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have, I've had some fun with Susie. I use her in my studio shoots. I'll show you another thing I've got. Hang on. So this is Ken. So, so you can't call me sexist. <laughs> I also have Ken, but that's Susie over there. Um, I use them when I do workshops or test lighting and stuff. So they're basically my uh, props uh, when I'm doing things like that. Um, where are we? Andre says, uh, would you please, oh, I've done that. Did you bought the 24 1.4? No, not yet, but I will eventually, that's for sure. Um, I'm going to talk about the 24 because I'm going to show Gerald, uh, who's in my photography videography group, has posted some pics and I'll, I'm going to go through them. He's the, he's, uh, the person that uh, the image I've used uh, in, as the header for this video. It's beautiful. Um, Canon is claiming they'll do a 24 1.2. Yeah, I heard about that today. Someone posted on my Facebook page about that. No, on my... Uh, YouTube uh, fade actually. I'm sure they will. I'm sure, look, I'm sure Sue Sony mentioned a while ago too that they're going to start producing wide uh, lenses. It's, we've just got to wait. I'm DeVance here. G'day, mate. How are you? Sid Vicious, uh, I will tell you, David, a lot of people are afraid to ask. Uh, free is good. Free is good. I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean because I did the shoot for free, Sid? Um, well, the, the, if you're talking about the shoot I did with Kiara, uh, if that's what you mean, well, like I said, I should have paid $150 per hour. That would have cost me a fortune. Like I said, I was there for six hours. It would have been incredibly expensive. I was very lucky for them to let me in there. They only let me in because they've seen my work. Um, and that's great. Also, it was a win-win for me now because I'm, I'm leaving some business cards with them because they also do wedding, high-end weddings there. Um, and I'm going to leave my business cards and they're gonna recommend me for, uh, for the, the uh, wedding photographer and videographer. So that's fantastic. Um, Creative Film said, love the A7 III. You posted a low light test film, Halloween edition. Check it out. Oh, you've posted one. Um, Philip said, hypothetical question on an A7000. Do you think the 20 frames per second burst could give the A7 III a run for its money as a budget A9? Well, we have to wait and see. But remember, it is still APS-C. And I know a lot of people carry on about APS-C and full frame. There is still a difference, guys, between uh, APS-C and full frame in the way I think. I love the look of full frame. Now, some people say they can't tell the difference. I love that wide open look of full frame. Like when I shot the uh, Tamron uh, the other day with Kiara, um, obviously I would have to have a super wide lens to match that type of look that I got 
uh, with Kiara with the Tamron lens there. So, and it's also better low light. There's, there's, there's multiple things that you get when you, when you go to full frame. It's much better in low light, and it's, it also has a different look. The depth of field is much better. Um, so I don't think it'll give it a run for its money, no, but it'll be an amazing camera. It, it, may, it might beat the a7 III for video, for instance, because it may give us 4K 60p. Um, Sue's here too. Good evening from Denver. Good day, Sue. Good to see you in here. Um, Sid, are you going? Are you buying or have used a Sony 400 mil? No, I haven't used it yet, Sid, and I'm not going to be buying it. No, um, because I don't have a need to. I don't shoot sports or wildlife, so I have no need for it. But I've held one uh, just the other week, actually. Um, can you give the details on the battery you use on your camera flash? Where can we get them? Um, I use AnyLoop. I'll show you which ones I use. Are you talking about my um, normal flash, David? Roy? If you're talking about these, uh, this is the Sony. Don't forget too, I always mention this because this is one thing that no other camera can compete with. The way that Sony does that, it's incredible. What it means is that if I'm putting this on the camera, so if I'm shooting this way uh, and I want to bounce off the roof, all right, I'll go that way. But the problem is the second you do that, you no longer can do it. Well, the beauty with Sony flashes is you can do this. How cool is that, honestly? Also, you've got an L LED through here. So if you're having trouble um, actual focusing, well, you can turn this LED on and you can use that to get focus. And you can also control how bright that is as well. You can see it comes up and down. It also has a little diffuser panel on there that you can put down. And it even has a... Um, incandescent uh, yellow filter that you can put on the back there too but it's an amazing really amazing flash never overheated because uh, I had the latest firmware so the batteries that I'm using are these so I'm just using the AnyLoop Pros now I believe um, you can also get these from uh, IKEA they're the same brand but much much cheaper but I believe they're just rebadged IKEA ones so that's what I'm using on my flash all right, well look guys, we better get started. I'll just read a couple more questions before we move on. Um, Scott said, um, oh hang on, here we go. I just better read these. Shane said, David, any problems with banding shooting concerts? No, I never had any. Um, I have an A7R three and having problems with banding with mine. Are you, are you using mechanical shutter, Shane? You shouldn't get banding if you're using mechanical shutter. You're not using silent shutter, are you? If you are, that's why. You can only use silent shutter for lighting conditions like that with the A9. I wouldn't use anything else. Wayne's just saying hello. Um, mention to Shane later if you're using the A7 III, A7R three in silent shutter. That's probably why you're getting banding. Um, Scott says, hi David, Sony A6300 user due to the A9 price reduction. I'm now can seriously considering it as my next camera. I know, it's, it's, it's come down amazingly actually. It's still not cheap, but it's cheap if you compare it to the competition, like what Canon and Nikon have in the D5S. Um, it, it really is a good buy now, the A9. It really is. Um, what else? Uh, Andrew says, I uh, don't know if it's a good idea to let Ken near Kiara. Oh, I meant to show you. I've, oh, bear with me. I've got to run and get it. Stay there. I'll be two seconds. show you now you know how Delta Dave sent me this shirt right which is thank you so much Dave so so he sent me this shirt looks at me heavy breathing I had to run right to the other house uh, he sent me <laughs> you're waiting for it he sent me this <laughs> I 
Oh, it's Ken. I love it. So you sent me this. How cool is that? I should put this as the header in the thing. <laughs> oh, that's a classic. I love it. All right, let's keep going down here before we move over. Don't know if it's a good idea to let Ken near Kiara during a live stream. Joe said hi from Florida. Fatter Mix here. G'day, mate. How are you? Um, APS-C does have a place in street photography. Yes, there's nothing wrong with APS-C, Mark. I mean, I use the A6300 and 6500 all the time, but I still prefer full frame. Have you ever used the likes of a Hasselblad? Yes, I used to use it when I used to be in fashion photography years ago. I also taught um, uh, medium format in university as well, when I was lecturing in university. Um, just jumped on this with a background while building, repairing the kitchen. That's what I think too, Photomec, that Shame is using probably an uh, electronic shutter. Carlos says, David, I just got the B10, it's arriving tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna love it, Carlos. That light has changed the way I shoot. It really has. It's interesting, because I just did a wedding on the weekend again. Like, I mean, it's my wedding season now. And I said to Kerry during it that, you know, <laughs> initially she was shattered because I went out and bought another light. But she has actually now seen how it has helped us. Because the funny thing was before, whenever I was shooting, I used to use the Profoto B1s, obviously, and I'd be firing flash off all the time, like during the reception, the speeches, all those sort of things. Well, now I'm just using the continuous light. I'm not using the flash at all. And I'm running one battery for the whole day, and it's lasting me the whole day. And I'm using flash when I need to, and then I, the second that I move out, uh, and we go into the reception and places like that, I'm using the uh, continuous light through the two foot octa, and it's gorgeous. And just being able to use that and then balance the light, the color temperature with it, it certainly has changed the way I shoot. I'm no longer using flash anymore. I'm no longer using flash when they're doing their dances. So I'm getting more environmental type portraits where it's matching the light that's in the venue. And I'm really loving it. So you're gonna have a ball, Carlos, you really are. Um, in fact, I'm almost tempted to sell my, a B1 and get another B10. I have to think about it though, but... Um, Joe, the A1 can do all of that, yeah, but nowhere near as powerful as what the um, B1 can. Um, what else have we got? That's about it. Gerald's here. Hi, Gerald. I've used your image. Did you notice? I'm going to show your images shortly when we're talking about the um, uh, the uh, 24 uh, G Master. Maybe Ken is Barbie. <laughs> you guys, honestly. He moaned me, Ken, when he said Ken, it reminded me I had to show this, uh, I had to show this doll, because I love it. Um, what else? Once you go full frame, there's no going back to APS-C. Dion's here. Hi, Dion, how are you? Joe, B10 tomorrow too. Woohoo, Joe, you're going to love it. Mark said, Jason Laney just put a video up again highlighting the roto light. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with the roto light. They're just not really for me, though, because I still like the flash. Um, if, I think to... If, definitely, if I had a choice, I would be buying the B10 over the Rotolite, that's for sure. But that's the way I shoot. Um, and I'm not sponsored by them. I know Jason is sponsored by them. I'm not sponsored by them. I've got two Neo Rotolites, um, but I only use those now for lighting up in receptions. And since I've got the B10, I haven't used them at all. Um, I probably should sell them. Um, Dane says, I know this is off topic, but do you think Sony will release new Sony APS-C camera this year? Hopefully by Christmas. Um, how powerful is that B10? Very, especially if you put the Magnum reflector on it. Um, it's really powerful. Um, but it's only a 250 watt strobe, but if you put the Magnum on, I've measured it with my um, light meter, and it actually goes up two stops. So if you put the Magnum reflector on, it does go up two stops. It's, it's unbelievable how much power that Magnum reflector gives it. Um, okay. So let's go to the first story anyway, because I want to go through all this stuff with you. Uh, let me switch over to here. And let me move this. Because I want to talk about this. This is interesting. So if you haven't heard, um, Sony have said, well, well, if you notice what's happened recently with the latest Sony firmware update, they've actually given you a warning now if you use third-party batteries. 
Um, it's coming up saying this is not a um, not a Sony battery that you're using. And, and I think there's reasons behind that that you, you could potentially damage your camera. And perhaps they're saying if, if something happens, well, it might void the warranty. I mean, you don't know either way, but I think if there is power fluctuations, this is the thing with these cameras now, they're becoming so sensitive and the electronics are that sensitive inside that if there is slight power fluctuations in the camera, it could cause an issue. So now Sony are giving you warnings about that um, when you turn the camera on. I haven't bought any third party batteries. I don't really believe in using them. Uh, I, I just prefer to buy the original batteries. I always have. Um, so, you know, I haven't got any, I've got six, which is funny, but I thought early on I needed a number of them and I bought six and <laughs> I only use one per wedding. So it's really interesting. Um, but I noticed this morning that Brian Smith is saying that some eBay people, and this is terrible because some people are seeing, um, I'm going to move this over too so I can not look so far away. Uh, some people are saying that they've bought what they thought were original batteries on eBay, but it turns out that they're fake. And this is one of the things that you've got to be very, very careful of about buying uh, anything off eBay, particularly things like um, batteries or uh, your cards, you know, your memory cards, because the, the problem is if you, um, I've just got to move this over so it updates. Uh, if you're buying, um, memory cards or these batteries, there is a good chance that you're going to get it from some Chinese third party manufacturer that's just copied it and they're not um, real batteries. So they're saying if that's happened to you, you need to obviously contact PayPal. Uh, but that's really bad. You know, when you think you're buying a, an original battery uh, and it's it's actually a fake one. Um, and so then, but now you would know because when you put it inside your camera, the camera's going to tell you that it's not a, an original battery. So at least now you've got that there uh, in case. Um, my suggestion really, I know some people are going to say, yes, you don't care about it. And you'll still use third party ones. I really believe uh, working from as a, as a professional where I want to make sure that I'm using the right batteries and I want to make sure they last, no problems with them. Uh, things like that. I mean, I was once with a shoot with Jason Lanier and, and his battery swelled up and he was using third party batteries. I think they were Wasabi uh, and he couldn't get it out of his camera. It took ages to get it out of his camera. Um, and that was another problem. And this is one of the reasons why I just don't use them. Um, people have also told me that they don't last as long, like with holding a full charge. Um, so especially with these batteries that have so much electronic um, sensors and stuff inside them, components, you're really better off to use a genuine one. I, my suggestion to you is, is use the real Sony batteries. I know they're more expensive, but it's not like you have to go out and buy heaps of these. You know, for a wedding, you really only need two. Um, like I said, I usually only go through one and I might put the, the second battery in late in the day and then that's it for me. So it's not like you've got to go out and buy stacks of them. So my suggestion to you is, is to buy real batteries and only buy them from somewhere like a camera shop or somewhere like that where it's reputable, uh, not off eBay because obviously you might get them being third party. So I'm going to open up the chat to see if anyone is talking about this first. So we'll come back and just see what questions people are, are talking about. Um, Scott says, come on guys, hit that thumbs up. Thanks so much, Scott. So I really appreciate that. Fatimik says, what you, what you all thought, uh, that Jason stopped selling rotor lights or something? They got to pay <laughs> the shields or I mean bills. Um, Shane Potter said, uh, yes. Now, guys, just, just on another matter, I'm not saying Jason, well, Jason is obviously sponsored by Roto Light. So he has to sell them. I want to show you something. Now, I'm not accusing Jason of this, but in one way I might be. I don't know how much he does really adore them. But I want to just show you this article. I was going to do a separate talk on this. Uh, I've got it down here somewhere. Let me just see if I can find it. Um, because I wanted to talk to you about this because it's, it is a problem in this industry. Um, let me open up this file for you. All right, so I want to open this up for you because I want to just talk to you about this. Now, this influencer, I'm not sure who he is. He's Stephen Granitz or something, is it? Uh, no, Luca Sabot. He's a social media influencer with 1.4 million Instagram followers, okay? 
Apparently he also, uh, it's saying in here, Sabat breached a $60,000 contract he signed to promote Snap Spectacles on Wait For It Instagram. The public relations agency said that as part of the deal, he was supposed to post three Instagram stories and one picture on his account. But as it turns out, Sabbath didn't fulfill his end of the deal. Um, and it's saying basically in here that they're going to sue him. Now, I think they're going to... What, how much were they going to sue him for? They want um, 45000 It gave Sabbath up front. Um, and I think he makes a million dollars per post or something they're saying. Uh, reports makes or something, I'm not sure. But I, I know down here they're suing him for not promoting the actual um, snap, uh, the spectacles. Now, this is what I'm trying to say to you. There was also one the other day, I can't remember who it was, but there was one the other day about, um, I think it was talking about the um, iPhone or something, and it was Samsung, I can't remember. Either way, it was some Samsung saying that they, this influencer didn't promote the Apple phone. So what I'm saying to you is you have to be very, very careful about what you believe that you see on YouTube because people are paid to support these things. And I promise you at the moment, I don't know if it will ever happen, but I'll tell you if it does happen. At the moment, I'm not sponsored by anyone apart from the backdrop, which is cake backdrops that I use, that they want to send me three backdrops and all I have to do is show the backdrops in a shoot uh, and use them in three shoots over the year. That's all I have to do. And I'll tell you because you'll know because I'll be saying it's Kate Backdrops at the beginning. But the problem is when you've got people that are promoted by, that are Canon influencers, that are Sony influencers, that are Nikon influencers, all these people out there are being paid by that company to promote their work. You've got people promoting their gimbals, you've got people promoting their lights. So when I talk about Profoto, I haven't paid a thing by Profoto. I'm, I'm actually paying the full amount to that gear. The only thing I got from it was the local store gave me one on release, which no one else could get, because he had one in the store and he said, David, do you want one? And I went and I paid for it out of my own money at the release date. Tamron lent me the lens, as you know, the 28 to 75, Tamron Australia, lent me that lens to use before it was released so I could show it, and then I had to give it back. I'm certainly, and I told Tamron that I'm gonna tell the truth, everything about that lens. So I'm not sponsored by anyone. Photo Miyak, who's in here as well, who's shot Nikon and stuff like that, is not sponsored by anyone either. Um, so you've gotta be very careful on what you believe with people out there, and, and the thing you should be asking people is, are they sponsored by that company first? I mean, you all know Peter, who was promoting the Canon camera that came out. And, and then all of a sudden, when the uh, 60 Mark II came out and it wasn't selling, all of a sudden, all these YouTube reviews started coming out. And it was so obvious that they were all being paid to, to actually show it. I think Hazelblad did it at one stage. So it's really obvious, guys, when these so-called people are, are being paid to produce that work. And you've got to be careful what you believe. I'm very skeptical about what people say on uh, YouTube reviews, unless I know they're really unbiased and they're not being paid by anyone. And that, that's one thing you've got to make sure uh, that you do understand. Uh, if, as my channel goes, if ever I'm sponsored by someone, I promise you I would tell you, and I would tell you up front, and I would never ever sell out in the fact that I would always tell the truth about something that I'm reviewing. Uh, if it was uh, and I would tell that to companies. I'd say, well, look, I'm gonna tell the truth. If it doesn't fit me, I'm gonna say that. Um, and you know, you've gotta be honest about what's out there, but, but just be careful what you believe. Um, you really do have to be careful. Um, let's keep going down to these questions. Um, Shane said, Photomeric, thanks so much. I'll dig into a bit more. Oh, yeah, he's talking about that shoot. Um, could be that the camera also logs if you use an aftermarket battery. Sony could then void the warranty. And that's why I'm saying you've got to be careful about using third party batteries in there because if it does damage your camera, they may know. So you may have to be careful. Um, Rick's saying, hi, Brad said, if you understand how much energy is contained in one of those batteries, you don't buy knockoffs, just save the $30. Uh, don't buy knockoffs just to save $30. Exactly, Brad, I agree with you. Um, Brad said, not worth burning your house down. It's talking about the batteries, I think. 
Mark said, no way um, I'd go non-genuine battery after paying 3K on a body. Oreo said, be careful, those third-party Amazon resellers cause some have counterfeit Sony batteries too. So Amazon as well. Thank you, Oreo. It happened to me with two of the old Series 2 batteries. Interesting. Um, Sid said, I don't have problems with people having affiliate links. Um, now a day is good. Well, neither do I, Sid. And, and that's the thing. I've got affiliate links. But I tell you there are affiliate links in the description down below. It actually says, if you look down below, it says these are affiliate links. I haven't got against anyone making money from anything in YouTube. What I don't like, though, is when people start to push things and say they're the best things ever, and they haven't paid for them, and they've been paid to, say, to sell them. That's why I was showing you that um, article there from those spectacles that he's being sued because he didn't promote them enough. And this is where you have to be careful about what, you know, what people are, are actually selling. Um, but I've got no problem with affiliate links either. That's why I reckon Ken, who keeps going on about not having affiliate links, is nuts. He should be running, running affiliate links. Um, House says, hey everyone, how far into the stream are we? A fair way. House, we've only gone through one story though. <laughs> we've all been having a chat again. Um, I didn't get notification. Yeah, I don't know why people aren't getting the notification. It drives me nuts. Please give a thumbs up, guys, because it does let people know I'm online. I don't know why YouTube's not notifying people. Uh, Venom said, oh my God, that idiot is the biggest douchebag ever. I wouldn't pay him a, a dollar to do everything. I've never watched him. So Dave Sincere said, what's going on, everyone? Ray said, woo, I thought that something was wrong with my Sony batteries. I don't need third-party batteries anymore. Uh, the problem here, though, Ray, is that they're buying them thinking they're original batteries. Uh, so that's terrible. And that's eBay uh, causing that issue that they're allowing these third-party batteries to go on there. That's, that's terrible. Um, Mark said, after my shoot, I always remove my batteries. Batteries will drain if left in the camera and can cause damage. I never take them out, Mark, ever. Um, but if it was stored for a long, long time, I would. Um, Gerald says, uh, I changed my philosophy and only use Sony batteries now. The gear is worth too much to ruin. It's not only the gear though, Gerald, too, but it can, it could cause you a problem or corruption on the card. If you're not getting full power, uh, it could cause a corruption and you've got to be careful of that. Like if you're in a paid shoot and you're using third party batteries and then there's a power fluctuation, uh, it, it could cause issues. So it's not worth it. Um, Andre says, uh, you have to post more behind the scenes. I am, I'm, I'm, I will be posting more, Andre. Um, I've only put the three up. I'm going to go through that whole wedding. I've just got to find time to keep posting them. I've been doing one a week, though, of that. Sid should kill a Ken has a problem with anyone having links. I know, he's silly, because he could be making way more money. Even said, Northrop said from the get-go that the 60 Mark II was a few generations behind, waited for Sony's basic, now outsold everywhere. Good luck getting one A7 II. And got one, I'm loving the... Oh, you say... Oh, yeah, I'm not sure what that means. Northrop said... From the get-go, the A7 III Mark III was a few generations behind, yes. Sid said, you will go broke without the links buying all of that equipment. Well, you do have to make some money back, and that's why I monetize my videos, and you'll see that, so I've always been honest about that, so the, the videos are monetized. I do have um, links down below, which I hope you use, so I have got them as well, um, and, and things like that where I'll get something back for the amount of work that I also put in, so, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing. Um... So I never ever ha have a go at anyone putting affiliate links. That's fine. That, that's perfectly fine. It's different saying something like you recommend this light or whatever and you're pushing it like crazy, crazy, crazy and it's obvious that you're just sponsored by them and that's why you're doing that. Uh, or pushing a camera, you know. Um, Peter, for instance, I'm not going to say his second name, but you'll know what I'm talking about when I mention Peter with a Canon camera. Um, it should be obvious, Mark said, you owe uh, to use... Only use preferred approach, approved gear and accessories. Yes, exactly. Ray saying hello. Amy says, um, I accidentally left my A7 III on for three days. I thought I had turned it off. Still 86% battery. <laughs> yeah, because it sort of goes into sleep mode, Amy. Um, Venom says, spending thousands on bodies and lenses and then buying cheap batteries seems totally legit. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Uh, Haas says, I wasn't aware of counterfeit batteries. Thanks for bringing this up. I love winning. I love the winning photos on your Instagram. It flows right through with the videos. Thanks so much, Haas. I am going to talk about... <laughs> I am going to talk about... I'm going to probably do it on... A, I was going to do it today. I don't think I'm going to have time. I'm going to bring up some comments. I'm going to do a video of some of the trolls 
that have left comments. You're going to kill yourself laughing when I show you what these comments say. So I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to call them out, these people. So I'm going to do a video and read out. Do you think it'd be funny to do it? I mean, I've been thinking, oh, should I? But, but then I thought, you know, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to show you some of what these trolls have to say about my work. And you're going to laugh your head off. Um, so I can't wait to show you that, actually. So I will record that. I've been screen grabbing them. Uh, so just wait. It's always like, the funny thing is, I haven't got a thumbs down. But I'm getting thumbs down now on my videos before the video is even almost posted. So... I'll post it and then I'll have a thumbs down within probably two to three seconds and I'll know that they couldn't have watched the video, it's impossible. So as my channel's growing, it's, it's really quite funny. I've got so many haters out there, you wouldn't believe the comments that I have to um, delete, but I'm gonna call them out and I'm gonna show you the comments because they're hilarious. I show Kerry and we laugh our head off. Um, anyway, I'm gonna do it. I'll do it sometime next week. Um, the troll comments, oh Lord, ha ha, yep, Sid Vicious, yeah, do it, David. All right, so let's go on to the next story anyway, because um, I wanted to sh just quickly talk about this. Uh, let me move this back over. Good news again for Sony. Um, they've had a 5% increase in imaging products. Now, guys, the, the thing you've also got to understand here is that most of the manufacturers aren't growing at all, so, so this is a great profit. They're actually saying, I think if you look um, through here, that they're actually saying that uh, sales increased by 5% due to improvement in a mix of stills and video cameras, uh, and the forecast has been um, revised upward by 1%. So far, uh, so far, so good. Now bring on the new DAMO 7,000 cameras and some new lenses. I mean, this is quite good. If you think about it, it has been a little while since Sony have released anything new, so... These figures are really actually good. They're probably one of the few manufacturers out there that in the camera market that's actually growing. So that's a great sign for Sony, it really is. And I'll put these links down below so you can read it. Just imagine now if they really hit the nail with the A7000 and if the A7 III is going to be incredible, um, what the sales might be like then. And this is the really interesting thing about what's coming on. Remember, we're getting more and more lenses now for Sony. Uh, obviously, the a7 III is still selling like crazy because it's still hard to get. Uh, we'll probably possibly have the a7000 by the end of this year, uh, which is also fantastic. Uh, and not only that, we'll have probably the a7 III uh, in the first quarter next year. That's, that's sort of what I'm predicting, probably in NAB or something. But we'll have that by next year as well. So their sales are growing now, and if those two cameras are, are released, it also should do very, very well. So let's open up the chat and see if anyone has anything to say about those sales. Uh, people are saying, do the trolls. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because it's you wouldn't believe the things that they say. You're gonna laugh your head off. Honestly, you really will. Um, Sony is in a position that they can wait until next year, and I think that's the thing, Sid. I think, um, the, the problem is, is that they haven't been pushed enough at this stage. And I'm gonna talk about what camera is the most, what people believe is the most threat uh, as well. Um, so I'll, um, I'll basically try if I can to um, talk about that in a minute where they're talking about how it compares to the a7 III, uh, the new Panasonic models and things like that. Um, so we'll keep going. Uh, so let me know, I want to see if anyone has said any comments about that. Um, hi, Ray Dade. Uh, David, I met Panda in person at Photo Plus, gave you and Photo Mia a shout out, and the 400 was an incredible feel. I know, Ray, it is. The 400, even though it looks massive, is actually not as heavy as what you, put, what you think it will actually be. That's the, that's the interesting thing. Um, so I was quite surprised when I picked that 400 up. And you could hand hold it. I mean, not for a ridiculous length of time, but you could actually hand hold it. Um, so thanks for saying hi, Ray. Casper um, said down with Nick on. <laughs> uh, that's why my photo me has said something nasty to Casper. Philip said, would love to see more Tamron glass. So would I. I'd love to see a 16 to 35 or around that F2 and a 70 to 200 F2 as well. If they're as light and as good as the 28 to 75, I'd love it. Um, Mark says, what is the drone thing all about? I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, Kasper and Fatomirka are fighting. <laughs> Settle down, guys. You need some coffee. Hang on, I better fill up my coffee cup. Let me just 
push this under here. I can just show you the... Uh... <laughs> there goes the monitorization. Nah, it's full of coffee. You couldn't tell that that wasn't full of coffee. Um, where are we? I want to hear that, that story too, Mark. I'm not sure what they're about. Gerald said, <coughs> with good releases on the horizon, Sony should be in a good financial shape for years to come. I know, and it's really stupid when people start to say Sony is just a, a you know, that PlayStation manufacturer. Honestly, they're, they're ridiculous, these people. I mean, do they, they forget where Sony, Sony bought out. Uh, you know, before. So you've, you've got to remember that Sony did have a camera background because they purchased that. Uh, so they haven't just come out of nowhere. And really, at the end of the day, who gives a hoot as long as that's working for you? You know, I mean, if it's working, uh, I don't care if they make PlayStations. I'm just glad that they're being successful. I mean, I really am, and they'll just keep going. So that's one great thing. WN said, Sony is, is not going to announce the A7S III until the Panasonic's SL specs are documented. You may be right. We're going to talk about all those cameras shortly because it's interesting what people are thinking there. Um, Sam said, uh, just saying hi from sunny, warm Los Angeles. Hi, Sammy. It's lovely here today too. It's uh, 30 degrees Celsius today. It's really quite warm today. Um, WN says, uh, we can expect an APC camera to be released next year to the Fuji X-T3. Definitely. Sony, I would say, is definitely, I'm hoping, going to release something before Christmas. I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, they still have to answer the X-T3. I agree with you completely. Because at the moment, the X-T3 beats the Sony A6500. Uh, and it beats it easily. So they really have to do bring something out to combat that. Um, Charles said, aha, I was right. It was a bit. I didn't show you. You didn't see that. It could be coffee in that. Tim said you need a coffee sponsor, wink, wink. How good would that be? That would be really good. Sid said, David, do you see the end of Micro Four Thirds with Panasonic announcing full frame? I hope not, Sid, because that's a fantastic system for video, apart from noise. I mean, I did find when I was shooting the GH5 that, that it was great. You put a fast lens on there, and like I've showed you with Kiara, if you go onto my Instagram account, by the way, I'll put Instagram on there, guys. Please like me. I've put it in the comments. I will like you back, I promise. If I miss you, just message me because sometimes I've got so many uh, subscribers in there uh, that sometimes they, they disappear off the bottom and I don't see you follow me. So if I have missed you, just message me and I'll, I'll definitely follow you back. Um, when I used the Panasonic, uh, it was fantastic if you use uh, really good light, um, uh, like fast glass. But the, the problem was the second you started to get into low light scenarios, the noise was a problem. So noise was an issue, and this is where I ran into problems with the GH5 in receptions. When I was using that for video, when I was doing the Fusion Weddings, the second it got really challenging light, the GH5 really, you know, you, I wouldn't push past sort of 1600 ISO. Even, even then it was starting to show noise. It, it was nowhere near what you can get with the... Um, say the A6500 or full frame particularly. The other problem was focusing. So I hope it doesn't disappear because there are a lot of videographers that love to use it. Um, but I am wondering whether Panasonic will be able to justify or have the finances to, to make two complete systems. So it's going to be interesting to see. The benefit with Sony is that you can use the same lenses on their full frame and the APS-C cameras. You're not going to be able to do that probably with a Panasonic. So that, that's going to be an issue with Micro Four Thirds lenses. So I probably would be worried if I was a Micro Four Third user. I hope it doesn't disappear, but you just don't know. Um, where are we up to? Uh, Mark said, so what will Sony call the drone? I'm going to talk about the drone shortly or briefly anyway. Uh, Daniel said, got the Flashpoint AD400 Pro in today. Such a smart light. Seems like it's a great light, Daniel. Uh, really nice, nice and light. Uh, similar to the Profoto B10, yeah. Uh, but think, but this one can take multiple shots, mounts and modifiers, Profoto and Bowens, and was half the price. Yeah. I mean, if, if you are starting up, you can't go wrong with getting that AD400 Pro. That, that's for sure. I suppose the advantage with the Profoto for me over that is I already have all the mounts, obviously. Um, but it also has the continuous light, which the um, Flashpoint doesn't. 
Uh, when I'm talking about continuous light, I'm talking about a light that's video continuous light and that can also be uh, color control. So it's got uh, color control in it as well. So you can balance to the ambient light. But massive difference in price. Yep, I agree with you. It is. It's a massive difference in price. Uh, but you do get what you pay for. Um, that's all I can say. But I, I really would love to try and get some Godox lights into review because when I'm honest with you guys, I would get way more views if I was uh, reviewing a light like, say, Godox, and I ever will with Profoto. So it probably does damage the channel a little bit that I use Profoto so much. Um, so I really probably should think about getting in Godox and doing some reviews with that because uh, it would help with views particularly. Um, and, you know, I should probably think about doing that uh, somewhere down the line because um, it certainly would help. Uh, as light, light is light, remember, too. So you're going to get the same result from using a um, flashpoint as you will with the Pro Photo. It, it's the main difference really is how well they're built. The other difference too is if you're trying to go into a hire shop um, anywhere in the world, you can hire Pro Photo gear, and it's and I'm used to it, and it's what I use all the time. Um, so it is one way that you can go into any shop and basically go in and hire Pro Photo. You you would have trouble doing that with Godox. So you know it's an interesting thing as well, and and. I don't like saying this either, but there is an expectation when you do high-ended work, particularly. I know when I do some high-end fashion work, um, and I don't share that usually because I can't, but when I do do high-end fashion work type stuff, they do really demand that you're using something like Profoto, more high-ended gear. Uh, it, it's just expected. I, I know I'm not saying that's right, but it isn't. It used to be like that with Sony too. When I used to do it with Sony, they'd even look at that a bit funny. They don't do that anymore, but they do still look at it from the aspect of looking at a pro photo symbol and seeing that symbol on there can make a difference. It does give you that professional cred. I know that might not be right, but it, it does. I know I'm going to get some comments about that shortly, no doubt. Um, Gary says, special brew coffee. Yes, it is special brew coffee. But if you were starting, Daniel, there's no way I would recommend getting a pro photo unless you've got an awful lot of money. I'd be saying go and get Godox because it is way cheaper. Um, but if you've got the money, you get what you pay for. It's just be it's beautiful. Never, ever miss fires. And, and I know some people were saying in the comments before, some have said to me, if you search online, there is problems. Sometimes you look and they are misfiring. I've never, ever had my pro photo misfire, ever. Um, and that can be a difference. Um, Cody said, are you, uh, are you ever going to do a photo review of your subscribers? Well, I may, Cody, what I'm thinking about doing, and you're probably going to hate this, but I, I am thinking about doing a Patreon um, because I, I'd like to try and expand the channel a little bit more. What I'm thinking about doing is doing a Patreon channel. I know everyone thinks it's just for the money. It's partly that. I mean, obviously, like I said to you, I'm never going to lie to you. It's another way of me making extra money, but it's also a way that I could give you guys something back as well. Because what I've been thinking about doing is setting up a Patreon channel. You'll get a personal email to me. You'll also get where I'll uh, review your work. I'll give special live um, chats once a week. And there'll be all these benefits that I can be contacted directly and things like that um, on Patreon. So I am thinking about doing that um, as an extra fairly soon, somewhere down the line. I'm really thinking about doing that. I noticed Scott from um, Wedding Film School is doing it now too. He's also doing it, but I think he's using the money to hire someone to do that. I don't want to ever do that. I like to be looking after myself basically, and then I just bring people in and pay them when I need them. But um, I am definitely thinking about adding that patron to help people out and then I can critique your work and you can send me work and I can have a look at it. Uh, I can give you one-on-one -on -one, like training, you know, we'll do things like that through Patreon. So that, that's going to be coming in the future. I just haven't had time at the moment to set anything up because I'm in my peak season now. Um, Michael said, Sony is running away with their sensors imaging. They are still putting more into consumer products like the PlayStation, of course, because that's where all the money is, Michael. But remember, overall, it's, it's making money as a whole company, so that there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, 
Hey, uh, Andre says, I'm following you already on Insta. Follow me back. Just message me on Instagram, Andre, because I, I, I won't see it. So message me on Instagram and then I will follow you back. Like I said, sometimes it scrolls down so far that I don't see them anymore. And I, you can only scroll so far on the iPhone. So if I have missed you and you've subscribed to me on Instagram, just message me on in Instagram and then I'll follow you back because then I'll know you. Just say, David, I've followed you. Um, where were we? Rod said, um, I bought what I thought was a real battery from eBay and found some articles online which proved that I had a fake battery. The eBay seller was reported, but he resurfaced under a different name. So does the camera, the camera would pick that up, Rod, wouldn't it? Uh, I hope there's no noise because they're, they're building a house next door to me, so I hope that noise is not coming through. Um, Tom said, I'm so close to buying an X-T3, but I'm hanging on for Sony. Just wait till Christmas, uh, Tom, if you can. Joe said, Sony went, full, Sony went full bore on the releases in the past and did well. Slowing down to worry about other camera releases is a mistake. Well, they're still selling more than they could produce, Joe, so I don't think it's a, a mistake. They, they're probably waiting. I, I still think if they do a great release, it's not going to hurt them at all. Uh, Sean said, website versus photo book showing people in person. I'm sure uh, it's situational. I use an iPad, Sean. You still can't beat a book, though. I mean, I'll show you what I usually show for brides. So I show brides this when they come in. Um, so basically, they'll get this. And, and this always sells. So, you know, if I bring this up, it comes in this case. Uh, and then if I take it out, I'll show you. So I'll show them this as a printed um, thing. So, you know, they'll, they'll start to look through this. Um, so you'll see this is one of the weddings that I've done here. It is always beautiful to show them work that, you know, that you can sort of um, show them in a printed form because th there's no point if you're trying to sell to brides or whatever uh, and you don't show them what you're selling. If you don't show them what you're actually selling, um, you're never, ever going to get um, the work. So it's always nice to, to show um, the work this way. You know, and I always try and show impact images if I can. Like, I'll, I'll always have larger images that I can show them. Um, and I'll always finish, you know, sort of with, with impact images on the end there, you know, that I can sort of show them. Um, so it's always nice to show this sort of work. And I have to laugh. One of the comments that I'm going to show you next week when I show about the um, uh, trolls that get me on the thing actually said to me, David, you are a shocking photographer. I can't believe brides hire you. <laughs> Wait till you see that comment. I loved it. Um, so it, it's hard to say. Printed always look beautiful, but I've also found that if you use a, uh, you know, a, one of the larger iPads, that also looks gorgeous as well because it has a glossy screen. Um, let me see. It. Um, did I miss you, Oreo? Message me again, Oreo, on Insta. If I have missed you, message me on on Insta. And then I'll add you. Yeah, see, I, a lot of people are going to say, and I hate that because I say to people, I'll follow you back. But sometimes, like I said, if I don't look at Instagram for a while, and then because I have 15, 16,000 subscribers, the problem is it jumps to the bottom and I don't see them anymore. And I can't scroll back on the phone. Um, so you can only scroll back so far and it doesn't let me get down. So if I have missed you guys, message me on Instagram as a message and then I'll, um, I'll add you. Uh... What else have we got? Julian Smith said, uh, hello, David, you're doing really good and it's always great watching your show. More power to you. Thank you, Julian. Sid said, David, uh, did you hear about the XQD issue that Nikon is facing with short supply and Sony holding out on production? I hope Sony aren't doing that, Sid. That'd be terrible of Sony to do that if, they, if that was true. Um, it, it is a problem if you don't go into an open format, though. And that's one of the problems when you go QXD. Uh, that's why they're more expensive, and that's yeah why they might be a supply chain issue. And yeah, it really is a bit strange. They they should have got around that by putting SD cards there as well. It should have had an XQD and an SD slot. So if if you're having trouble getting XQDs, then at least you could have run the SD slot. Um, yeah, no, I haven't heard that though. Andre said I'm following you on Instagram. Follow me back. Yeah, just message me and Andre. Um, Sid said I know XQD is backward compatible with CFast Express. 
Ray said, I don't know why there are so many apologists. Jason Lanier says, it's best to use the gear that works for you. Sony is just using tech and people uh, want those Nikon and Canon in need to get that program. I agree, it is only tech at the end of the day. Uh, I was only mentioning that you have to be careful what you believe though by some people that are selling stuff and that was proven that I showed you that article for those spectacles. Uh, Ray said, I'm not saying Jason doesn't believe that light's any good. I'm just saying, and Jason always says, if you look at him, he, he always admits that he's sponsored by Roto Light. But a lot of people don't tell you that. That's the problem. They won't tell you that they're shilling for that company. And that's what you've got to watch. Um, Ray said, can you borrow RX1 and do a review? Yeah, I don't know where I'll get one though, Ray. It's harder in Australia to get stuff. Dion said, uh, you can use my AD600 and AD200. That's great, Dion. I'd love to do that one time. Well, I want to come and do a shoot with you anyway because I want to borrow your um, 100 STF lens uh, and do a portrait shoot with that. So we'll have to organise a shoot together. Uh, Pav said, hi, David. Would you recommend for someone who's just getting into photography and cinematography to get A7 III or would it be better to wait for the A7S III for cinematography use mainly. If you're doing cinematography solely, I'd wait. Uh, but having said that, the a7 III is amazing. Uh, watch Kiara's video that I've just posted. That was done all with standard profiles. And I think it's beautiful. I really do think it's beautiful. I'm not saying I'm a videographer, but I think the images look beautiful. Uh, and there was very little uh, editing done. So have a look at it and see if you think it meets your needs, you could go for that now. The problem is if you need it now, I'd buy it. If you're not in a hurry, I'd wait, but we don't know when that camera's gonna be released. So it's hard to say, you could, have, you could have that camera for six months and be using it, do you know what I mean? So if you need it now, I'd get the a7 III now because it's an amazing video camera. Photomiac said, nobody can afford Pro Photo, David, as much as I want that B10. Yeah, it's expensive, Photomiac, I agree with you. Like I said, it also costs me views because um, you will never ever get the views by showing a Pro Photo light as I would with getting Godox. And I probably should use Godox for my video shoots, like when I'm shooting Kiara and things like that, because I'll get way more views by using that than I ever will with using Profoto, that's for sure. Um, Godox is much better value for your dollar. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's uh, way cheaper. I agree with you. Um, it's just, I, I just adore Profoto. I just love the mount. I, I just love everything about it. Like I said, it never misfires. Uh, I certainly wouldn't be buying it though if I wasn't earning money with photography though, that's for sure. Um, Cody says, Flashpoint has very strong LED light, twice as strong as AD600 from what the rep says. Yeah, but you, you might say that it's, it's, it's strong LED, but the difference was I was mentioning with the pro photo is you can do the color, Cody. That, that's the difference. So you can actually control the color temperature. No other light out there, strobe, has that ability to do that. Uh, it's the, uh, the only one that has it is Profoto. I'm sure Godox, now that Profoto have done it, will reverse engineer that and you'll see it within 12 months on a Godox light. I'm sure the AD whatever 500 will probably have it. Um, uh, Ray says, also the trigger can work with the same light on Godox. Yeah, because it's basically the same light. Julian said, many trolls don't realize that it's a big advantage for Sony being an electronics company. I oh, know they don't get that at all and it's silly because it is. I mean, I don't think there's any problem at all about Sony making other things. I mean, Canon make other things than cameras, don't they? Um, Nikon really are probably the only one that, that mostly makes cameras. I, I suppose they may make other things. I'm not sure about, but I know Canon make an awful lot with medical devices, printers, uh, all other things. So really, you could say the same thing about Canon. Panasonic, you could say the same thing about Panasonic, couldn't you? Um, Haas says, there's no shame in being straightforward about the money when it comes to YouTube. It is difficult to expand unless you follow this route. We will support whatever path you take. Thanks, Haas. Um, Cody says, I'd sign uh, up to the Patreon uh, if you'd start using Godox. <laughs> Well, that's why I'm saying, Cody, that I'll probably have to. I get so many questions about doing it, and I get so many questions about using the gear that I don't know how to answer. So, like I said, I probably will um, start using it. Like I said, it certainly will help views. And and the end of the day, that's 
you know, what I'm after here as well, as well as like this is just about me chatting with you as a bunch of mates. But when I'm putting up videos like with Kiara and shooting stuff like that, that's, I'm, I mean, I'm being honest with you, that's to get views. I'm not lying about that. Um, so that sort of stuff, I'll get way more views if I use uh, Godox gear than I'll ever get using Profoto. That, that's for sure because the promo, the Profoto market is tiny compared to using Godox and, and because of the money that's involved. I probably still will shoot Profoto occasionally and I'll definitely still use it when I'm doing weddings and things like that. Um, but if I'm doing video reviews and things like that, I really should be using Godox. I agree. Um, well, Nikon makes tons of higher medical equipment. Oh, thanks, Ray, because I was just talking about that. Well, there you go. So they do make medical equipment. Uh, Canon has also other fields with printers and cameras. Yes, I agree. Joe said, Pro photos are 10 times easier to use. Uh, that alone is worth the price. The good thing, though, Joe, too, is they're almost indestructible. And this is the thing that I do say about the Pro Photo gear. It is incredibly robust. When you, I've dropped the Pro Photo that many times, um, Kerry's dropped it that many times, and it just keeps working. And like I said to you, I've never, and I'm being honest when I say that, I've never had the Pro Photo misfire. Um, when I use the Flashpoint, I've still got Flashpoint in the, um, I think it's an AD600 or something. Uh, I think it's the Flashpoint version. Uh, it's one of the older ones though. Um, I've got that in the studio there, but I should get Godox because it's a bigger name that I could show when I'm, I'm reviewing stuff. But that did misfire occasionally and it was frustrating sometimes when I'd be doing weddings and I was used to the Pro Photo gear and I started to use that as a review. The reason why I did it because when Proto, Pro Photo first came out when I went to Sony, it wouldn't use high speed sync. Now that's all fixed because they've upgraded everything with firmware, but it didn't use high speed sync. So I got the flash point and that had high speed sync. And so I used that a few times. And the problem was it did miss fire occasionally and it frustrated me because I'd never had that before. Um, and I do read in, in forums that people do say uh, they, they occasionally miss fire. Some of you might say, look, you've never had that and that you might be lucky, I don't know. But um, I know I've read in forums that they do misfire every so often, and I can, I've can i never had my Pro Photo misfire ever. And the thing is too, I can be a ridiculous length away. I mean, I'm talking where you can almost not see them. I can be talking to Kerry through walkie talkies, and they will still never misfire. Uh, they're incredible. Um, so you get what you pay for, but like I said, I definitely would be better using Godox for reviews, that's for sure. Um, Yes, a professional Sony drone is needed. We can attach to our RX1s. I'm going to talk about the drone shortly because we're going to move on in a minute. Hey, David, out of um, topic Q, any word on when the Tamron wide angle 2.8 lens will be released? No, I haven't heard anything yet at this stage. Uh, David said, G'day, David. It's official Canon have um, filed for three new wide angle uh, patent lens, ESR full frame mirrorless cameras, um, 14 to 21 f1.4, uh, Canon RF 12 to 20 f. Two. Um, their lenses are great. Uh, that's why I do think that the Canon ESR, they're going to release a uh, larger or, or more professional camera, that's for sure. There's no way though, those lenses that they've released at this stage is for that EOS R as it is at the moment. They'll be releasing a uh, higher-ended camera soon. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Rikrat. Who, why has no one really put a super chat in yet? <laughs> thank you so much. I will show Delta Dave's t-shirt he sent me. Look at this. Delta Dave sent me this with this, in case if anyone's tuning in late. I love it. <laughs> Ken, I love it. Um, thank you so much for that, really appreciate it. Um, Mark said, just did another shoot for Maxim uh, and all with one Godox 8200. Really does not matter what you use, it matters how you use it. Remember, light is light, and that's the thing I have to say to people, it doesn't matter what you use, light is light. The end of the day, light is light, isn't it? All right, so let's go to the next story. Um, what is the time? Boy, I've got to get moving soon because I've got to get everything ready for tomorrow. Um, I wanted to talk about the Sony 24mm because it is available now. Uh, you can buy it. It's in stock. It's actually saying that it's in stock in Focus Camera if you wanted to buy it from there. But I wanted to talk about Gerald who posted some images, and I'll just talk about this in a minute. Initially, when I saw this lens, I thought, oh, I probably will never want this. Um, but after I saw the specs of what the lens was, I thought, wow, I might be interested in it because it's one G Master lens that I am interested in because of the lightweight lens. It really is light. 
Uh, the 24 mil would be great for me on a gimbal, and obviously it's 1.8 as well. Uh, but Gerald posted some images um, on his Facebook page, so he showed here, and I thought I'd talk about this uh, with you. Um, they're just beautiful. Let me just uh, reduce this down though, so you can see the whole thing um, for a minute. because I think there's two longer images and then there's some bigger images. But the depth of field in this is gorgeous. Uh, lovely, sharp um, colors. This is in my photography videography school. If you haven't joined us there, please join us. Um, it's photography, the and, not and, written, and videography school. Uh, so Gerald posted these images uh, this morning because I asked him if he would post some images as he got them. Uh, and he did. And it looks gorgeous. I mean, beautiful colors, very sharp. And the way it just drops off uh, on the edges is quite stunning. Uh, you can see the bucket down here. This is a fisherman apparently fishing down here. Uh, gorgeous rendering, lovely colors. Looks like it's lovely and sharp. Uh, and the uh, bokeh is, is just beautiful. I mean, it looks gorgeous. It's lovely depth of field down here. Um, his third image is this one here. Now let me blow this up a bit so you can see it again. But it looks like the lens is a real winner. I mean, uh, Gerald is saying uh, how nice it is and lovely to use. Really happy with it. Great fall off when you're looking at it. And it's great to see other users, you know, using it, not reviewers uh, of so-called people that are going out to these workshops and everything looks the same. It's great when you see it in real uh, shooters' hands. So I just wanted to show that to you. Um, it obviously seems like it's a really uh, beautiful looking lens. Uh, and I think the colors are exceptional, like, like really gorgeous. I think Gerald was saying it was straight basically out of camera. Um, what was he saying? Let me just see if I can bring up the what he said. He just said back here that, um, I'll move this down. By the way, if you wanna join us, photography and videography school, uh, please join us in there. Uh, Gerald is saying with my A7A, it was shot with his A7R3 and my Sony 24mm 1.4G lens. A couple of quick grab shots while I was out uh, today along a nearby lake. The fisherman is in the background along the lake bank and I showed you that. But I focused on the leaf hanging from the tree branch swaying in the wind and backlit by the sun. Um, first the crop shot and then the full shot showing the nice bokeh and the sun reflected on the surface of the lake. And a ground level shot showing a leaf showing the nice bucker at 1.8, uh, 1.4. Due to the high wind, these shots were with 1 2,000th of a second, F1.4, ISO 125, 24 mil more to come, loving this lens. Um, so, you know, really great. And you can see all the um, three shots that is actually there. So this is a crop of this one. Um, lovely and sharp, when you think that's a, you know, being cropped from that, again, it shows how versatile the A7R 3 is if you want to use cropping in camera. Uh, but great lens, it's now available. It's certainly something that I may get uh, down the track because I'd like to actually get it potentially to use on a gimbal. Um, and that would be probably where I'd love to use that from. Um, so yeah, so anyway, uh, Gerald has got that lens. He'll be posting more obviously in the group. Delta Dave's here, thank you so much, Dave. Um, I was just showing this amazing t-shirt that you gave me. Thank you so much, mate, I really appreciate it. Um, so Travis Harris was having an issue with the B1 and got right on with Pro Photo Rep. Um, got right on with a Pro Photo Rep. Try go, uh, doing that with Godox Share, yeah. and that's that's the thing, Dave. Uh, who do you talk to if you have issues? See, th this is the thing. I, ha I had a uh, shoot the other day. Um, I was shooting some models in the studio. I had the camera on the ground, and unfortunately, uh, one of the models walked past, and she. Um, kicked uh, the camera, she didn't mean to do it obviously, and I went, oh no, but anyway, uh, it broke the mount on my um, Godox uh, receiver, transmitter. Um, I went out to the Pro Photo dealer that I deal with here in Melbourne, and he sent it off, and two days later I got it back. You can't do that with Godox, if it's an issue, it's basically throw away. And that's the thing with that, you know, if you need support for anyone, I can message anyone and I would get back support straight away. Uh, when there's firmware updates, I get emails from Profoto to say there's a new firmware available. Uh, the new iPhone app that just came out yesterday was updated that now has extra features that work from the phone uh, and all things like that. Um, I think it added, what did it say? It added yesterday. Um, I've got to try it yet, but I noticed it said yesterday in the updates that, uh, what was it saying? 
It said that yesterday's updates, the update brings capture functionality with faster light synchronization and more light output, a selfie camera. Actually, I can use the app to take selfie using the Profoto Flash. Um, so that's interesting. So it's going to be doing selfies as well. Uh, and it's had a compatibility with the iPhone and iFX Max. And to have that ability to control that flash completely from this, from my iPhone, and to control the flash, also to control the light intensity and everything else, you know, it, it, you get what you pay for. Um, that's for sure. Um, I'm sorry this isn't part of the conversation, but what do you think of the Sigma MC11 for Canon lenses to Sony E-mount? I'm getting mine tomorrow. This, it's great. The only issue is if you're dealing with really heavy lenses like the Sigma lenses, um, like the 105, they, they can have a tendency, I believe, to um, break. So I don't think they're as strong as the meta bones. But if you're dealing with normal lenses, like your, your 70 to 200 and things like that, uh, I, I believe it's a fantastic um, lens mount. I don't think you'll have an issue. Casper uh, said, the Profoto B1 sounds like it's worth every penny. Oh, well, I love them. Uh, Mark said, uh, photography, just make sure all the firmware is up to date. The M711 has a port for updating, yes. Gerald says, uh, too tight on the full image on the screen. Can't see the fisherman and the bokeh. Did it end up fixing? Uh, oh, let me come back. Didn't I refresh it? Oh, I didn't refresh it. Let me just come back because I'll refresh it so you can see it, guys, because I know what happened there. Uh, if I go like this, I think I have to refresh it. Um, I'll just show you this image again. And let me refresh again. And let me... There you go. All right, so you can see it through here. Sorry about that. Yeah, I always keep forgetting you've got to refresh if you resize. Uh, you can see the fisherman down the bottom down here. Uh, and the lovely bokeh that's that's out in the background through here. So if you're looking at the rendering on that, you can see how beautiful it is. And when you're dealing with it, like I said, that crop is from that. So that's using the A7R3, uh, and you're dealing with your crop from that. That's where the A7R3 is outstanding if you're going to be doing uh, cropping in camera. Thanks, Gerald. Yeah, I always forget if you um, don't refresh, uh, you get problems. Uh, let me just come back to here. And before we do that, I'm just going to switch back so I don't miss this next story. Because um, I'm going to have to... I want to enlarge this up. So let me just open up the questions for a minute about the 24, if anyone has anything to say on that. Um, yeah, I'll fix that, Gerald. Uh, been meaning to say like this, Gerald, I just said your crop is too tight. Yeah, okay, sorry. I, I always forget to hit it. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, Christopher said, have you ever used the Baddest 25? Yes, it's a great lens. Um, but I think I'd be buying the 24 over the Baddest, uh, Christopher. That, that I, I just would. Having the D-click, I haven't got a lens in here. Having the D-click aperture on that lens is fantastic. Um, also, having your manual focus switch on there is great too if you're dealing with video. Um, so I'd be getting the 24 um, over the Batis. Um Johnson said, borrow the RX1 from Sony Pro Support. Um, Sam said, you pay premium for a great pro photo service, great product. I agree, Sam, it is a great product. And you do get great service. I have to admit, you get great service. Uh, since Flashpoint comes through S Adorama, I've used Adorama support for firmware update help and other questions. Much better support in the USA with Flashpoint than Godox support. Interesting. Um, okay, so let's go to the next story anyway. Uh, I wanted to show this because Sigma have announced two new lenses. Um, well, they're basically, uh, there's going to be a 56mm 1.4, and they're also saying a 40mm 1.4 as well. So this is interesting, and again, we're just getting more and more lenses, aren't we? Like, it, it's it's crazy how many different lenses now that we're getting. It, it really is. You, you certainly can't complain now if, you, if you're shooting Sony E-mount, that's for sure. And just remember, too, these lenses can be used in the A6300 and the A6500 as well. Um, so fantastic. Um, let me know, too, in the comments whether anyone is interested in these lenses. It's not something that I would need. I've already got the 55 1.8, so I'm certainly not going to get the 56 1.4. Um, but if you were after a 55mm or 50mm lens, this, this could be obviously one that you could get. 1.4, it's probably going to be beautiful to use. Uh, the 40 also 1.4 is going to be interesting as well. So that's competing 
uh, obviously with the bad uh, with the baddest that's out there. Although the um, that's only f2, isn't it? I think the baddest. Uh, so this is a 41.4. So it's really interesting. It really is. And I think, like I said, we're just in a win-win situation at the moment with lenses. We really are. I'm going to keep moving on, and I'll come back to questions in a minute because I have to go soon because um, I've got to get stuff ready for the shoot tomorrow. Uh, so let's go to the next story. I noticed that the A7R 3 was used in the Apple, um, showing uh, the iPad Pro range, and it's interesting, this is how trendy Apple, uh, Sony is at the moment, and it does sort of fit into that Apple um, marketplace. In other words, I think they're very similar in how they market, and the type of user that would use the Sony cameras, it would often be to also that type of app, Apple user as well. So it's interesting to see that they're showing the USB-C um, as well. When I'm talking about the, the way that it could be an Apple user is they're very similar in how they advertise and promote and things like that and use influencers and things like that. It's very, very similar. Anyway, I think that's a great thing that they've used Sony there. I think that was a, a great thing for Sony and I'm just glad they did it. I just wanted to mention that quickly. Next story coming in is, th this is just a, a, a potential at this stage, is that Sony has put out this patent to show images of a drone camera. Um, so this is really interesting, and perhaps it is to work with one of their RX cameras. Um, or will it have an inbuilt sensor with it? I think that 110 is probably the, ca uh, the Canon the camera here, is it, perhaps? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I haven't all read it yet. But once again, it just shows how Sony are thinking about the future and innovating. Um, this will be really interesting, and I wonder how much DJI and others will be a bit worried if they start to see Sony jumping into this space as well. Um, exciting. We can't really say much more about this at this stage, but like I said, anything that you see like this is quite exciting for the future and, and to sort of see where they go, because the Sony action cams are really quite good. I haven't got them. I've got GoPro, but I have been tempted to get the Sony action cam. Um, and look at it. But, you know, anyway, like I said, I know Photomiak, for instance, uh, swears by the uh, Sony action cams. He says the stabilization in that is really, really good. Um, so let me know in the comments anyway what you think about that one. Uh, and lastly, before we go to Q&A, a quick q and I just wanted to show you this because this was really interesting. Um, this article in Sony Alpha Rumors has come up and it says, uh, I'll move it down so you can see it, Canon Nikon or Panasonic? Who do you believe is the most serious FE competitor, Sony FE competitor? I would have thought initially it was going to be the Nikon, but because I press Nikon, but the Panasonic has blown the others out of the water, and this is really interesting. So let me know in the comments what you think about this, uh, and I'll have a quick chat with you in the live chat, but this is really interesting because uh, obviously most Sony users, remember this is Sony Alpha Rumors, so this is only Sony users uh, clicking on this, but most of them believe that it's the Panasonic that's going to cause the most uh, issues or the, is going to be the biggest competitor for Sony. And I think that's really quite interesting. So let me know what you think about that too in the comments uh, down below and also in the live chat. All right, so I'm going to open it up to Q&A uh, quickly. So we'll spend about five to 10 minutes going through all this, guys. And um, then I'll have to go, because I've got to go and grab all this gear out to take tomorrow. Um, Chris said, have you used a Baddest 25? Yes, I have, and I liked it. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't buy that now, though. I'd buy the um, G Master 24. Um, borrow the X RX1 from Sony Pro Support. I should see if Sony Pro Support lends gear here. I'm not sure if they do in Australia like they do in the US, though. I'll have to find out. Sam said, you pay premium for great product service, great product. Yes, I agree, you do. Uh, I read that one before. Um, Rob's Travel said, 56 millimeter is AP. Oh, it's APS-C, is it, Rob's? Oh, thanks for telling me that. Okay. So 56, you're going to get around about 85, aren't you? It'll be about an 85 mil on that camera. Interesting. Hmm. Be a nice lens, probably, if you wanted a great portrait lens on APS-C. Uh, Mick said that is 1.4 format for the APS-C. It is one I'm looking forward to on my A6300. Thanks for saying that. I, I didn't realize that was APS-C. Well, obviously, that's going to be a fantastic lens if you're dealing with the A6500 or even the new A7000 series. Uh, that would be a great portrait lens because it's going to give you that look of an 85mm. Um, 
Joe said, every time I try uh, download the uh, B10 app, I keep getting the message, this app requires specific features not available on this device. That's interesting. Uh, it, what iPhone have you got, Joe? That's interesting. Perhaps you, you've got an older one or something. Mick said APSC, yep. Um, Gerald said, um, not seeing the screen. Oh, have I done it again? Oh. <laughs> this is stupid. I hate the way that program works. I've just come back. I was only on there quick. Um, let me just clear this questions. This is the drone if you're looking at it. Uh, basically what it looks like. I think, I'm not sure whether this is the camera or whether the drone's gonna be, the camera's underneath. But like I was saying, I'll put the link down below anyway so you can have a read of this patent that comes out. Uh, but it certainly is interesting if you have a look at it. Um, but, like I said, that, that's basically all the thing shows at this stage. There's not much there uh, to look at. But like I said, it's interesting anyway that um, we've got something Sony innovating once again. Uh, all right, let's go back to questions. Thanks for telling me. I always forget to click it. It's a pain. I wish it would auto do it when you um, click on it. I really wish the second you change something, it should auto update in the preview. Um, Haas said, I would love to have one on the read uh, regarding the A7 tips, tracks. Since this is the camera, I'll definitely be buying, just waiting on the A7 thousand announcements. I would love to have one on one. Oh yeah, one I'm regarding, yeah. Well that's the sort of thing that I'm thinking about if I set up a Patreon has, is that you know you can you can sort of contact me directly. Um, hopefully that worked now. Got an email from Sigma that the new lens competes with their set of prime lenses. Interesting. Um, don't be surprised if the Sony drone ends up being tethered to Sony cameras so you can monitor and shoot on the fly. Could not see the images. I'm hoping that went better. Uh, you could see the 56 mil, couldn't you, that one? You could see those. Just let me check you actually saw those. That was the 56 mil 1.4 in case if uh, I didn't click the update on that. Um... Do you know anything about the Canon Zoom 70 to 303? I bought it from a pawn shop here where I live for pretty cheap. It's brand new, not even out of the box. I paid 75 bucks for it. Wow, that does sound really cheap. No, I don't. I haven't shot Canon. I used to shoot Nikon, so I can't comment on the Canon uh, lenses uh, F27, sorry. Uh, Mark said, oh, life at lay, that drone looks like it uses PC fans. I know, it's interesting, isn't it, when you look at it? I'm not sure whether it's a tiny little thing or what, you can't tell. Uh, you really can't. Uh, hope you like pixels. Hi, David. Sony Z battery warning. What's up with the battery? I'm late to the party. We were talking about that eBay was selling fake batteries that people would believe that they, excuse me, were original Z batteries. Um, so you've got to be careful if you buy batteries from uh, eBay and, you know, you're paying good money and they're fake. Uh, so that's one of the problems that you've got to actually uh, look at there. Any last questions, guys, before we finish up for the day? Um, like I said, I've got a shoot all weekend, so I won't be um, posting, I don't think. I might post a, a quick video of my setup in the studio that I'm doing. Uh, any word on the A7000? No, we're still hoping before Christmas. I really do hope that, but there hasn't been any rumbling since, has there? So I'm not sure. Um, but I, I just hope we get something by Christmas. I really do. Haas says, Sigma Stuff said the new 40 centimeter Sim lens has the best glass quality they have to offer, but I believe it's only for Canon and Nikon. Oh, that's interesting. Thanks for sharing that, Haas. Um, they may, well, obviously, you could probably get the adapter and you could run it that way if you liked, um, but that's interesting. Hmm. I'm just seeing if there's any last questions before we finish. Hope you like pictures saying thanks, David. Don't forget, next week I am going to, I might do it Monday. I might post that video about the trolls. I'm dying to show you some of the things that people are saying. You're going to have such a crack up when you see it. You really will. Don't forget to watch Kiara's video. I've also posted the latest video in the wedding series, which was makeup. Uh, the next one, we start to go through the ceremony, I think. Um, so we'll be doing that uh, in the next one. I think that's what... I know it might be the bride getting dressed in those videos, actually. Uh, so look at that, too. If you haven't subscribed, guys, so please subscribe. I'm going to put down my uh, Instagram. Please like me there. Guys, if I don't follow you back, if I miss it, please message me personally on Instagram because I do miss it sometimes um, because I have so many people messaging and then it, it disappears. So if I have missed you, please message me on Instagram and then I'll know you've, you've followed me and I'll follow you back. Uh, apart from that, 
please join their photography videography school. Uh, that's growing fantastic and it's for you guys uh, that follow me in YouTube and it's for you, your community. Uh, there's no um, restrictions put on there. I'll put what it is just so you know how to find it. You've got to put it in like this, all right? You've got to put it in photography and videography. Oops, it should say school at the end too. Hang on. All right, if you follow it like that, you'll find it. If you put and, that's why people don't find it because they type in and. Uh, please join us there. It's where it's a very positive site, guys. I'm not allowing anyone to talk the usual crap that you get on these other sites where we have prima donnas that start to shoot down new people and start to critique things with being really nasty. If they do that, they're out of there. Uh, I want this to be the most positive uh, place you can basically post in YouTube without anyone feel threatened at all. Uh, so please join us there. You can share your videos. You can share your web pages. You can share your Instagram feeds. The only thing you can't do is post live to it. Um, so please join me on that side as well. All right, guys, I'll see you all again soon. I've got to finish my coffee. Thank you so much, Delta Dave, for the T-shirt. I'll make sure Kiara gets hers. Um, and I'll see you all again soon for the next video. I just dropped Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now guys. Have a great weekend too. Love you guys.